Today I'm going to be sharing a demo of the Coulter's Slide Lock. I'm going to talk a little bit first about the features of the Slide Lock and then at the end of the video after the demo I'm going to show a few clips of how it's made just because I think that'll be a little bit fun to see. Alright so first I'm going to talk about the features on the Slide Lock. Alright so you can see here there are two different sizes to the Slide Lock. There is a smaller slide lock that is 14 inches and then a larger slide lock that is 24 inches. And the smaller and the larger slide lock are constructed in pretty much the same way, just different sizes. Now they are both three and a half inches wide. So 14 by three and a half inches and 24 inches by three and a half inches two features that I really would like to highlight the most is how thick the acrylic is here. It's a quarter inch thick, so a lot thicker than some of your more traditional acrylic rulers that you'll use. And why I think that is important is because when your rotary blade is up against it, it's a lot less likely to slip over the edge. Next, you'll see that there are holes across the bottom of the acrylic. So that is because when you don't have the handle pressed down, you can move the ruler around very easily to get it lined up where you need. But as soon as you get it lined up and press it down, those bumpers across the bottom are going to go through the holes and grip the fabric so that the ruler doesn't slide around on you. Very important for cutting because if you engage this handle and have the bumpers drop down, you are going to keep your ruler in place and it's not gonna slip and slide on you so you'll get much more accurate cuts. Because of this feature with the handle as well, when you are cutting along with the thicker acrylic and your hand being up out of the way, you're a lot less likely to get cut, which is also a very wonderful feature. I don't know if you've been cut by a rotary blade before, but they are very sharp and it is not fun. So any way you can stay a little safer when using a nice sharp rotary blade is good by me. Those are some of the quick features that I think you'll like about the quilter slide lock. So I'm going to jump into showing you how to use it. All right, so you can see I have some fabric here that is pressed and ready to cut. So. I like to use the larger ruler first when I'm cutting yardage because it is longer and this ruler uh, extends the whole length of the folded fabric so it is perfect for cutting my yardage. So I'm going to slide over to the raw edges here and I'm going to first just square this side up. So if you notice I try to keep my hand completely on the other side of where I'm cutting. So my thumb in the pad of my thumb is kind of right there on the patented and I push that down and that'll keep everything in place for me. So I cut across here and I'll move all of that fabric out of the way. You see that my ruler is up on the fabric so the bumpers are engaging with the fabric. All right, so now I'm going to need a ruler with lines on it because I'm sure you noticed that this, the Quilter Slide Lock doesn't have any lines on it. This is just meant for cutting and then you'll need to use the lines on your mat or on your ruler for measuring the cuts that you need. So for the pattern that I'm going to be cutting this fabric for, I need to cut six and a quarter inch strips. So I'm going to line up the six and a quarter line on that freshly cut edge. I'm going to place my hand down to hold it in place and then slide my slide lock up against it and then I can make my cut. Now, like I said, you could also use the ruler, the lines on your mat if you would like. I just think that using a lined ruler helps me get those measurements pretty quick. So lined it up, got my slide lock up against it, and I'm going to press down and cut. So for me, I think it's pretty easy to get those cuts. I know if you're not used to using two rulers at a time, it could be a little bit of a learning curve for that, 
but I really think that once you give it a try and get going with it, it becomes kind of second nature and you can do it pretty fast, especially if you know the cuts you need. If you're cutting a bunch of um, two and a half inch strips is a good thing to start with because that's a cut that we often do a lot uh, for binding. Um, if you do two and a quarter, then definitely that. But uh, a cut you're used to doing over and over is good practice for kind of getting used to using the slide lock. I need one more set of those to get cut for my pattern and then I'll show you using the smaller ruler and how I use that one. So another six and a quarter cut. And the biggest thing for me to learn was to keep my, cause I, with this ruler, I like to put my hand nice and flat on it to hold it in place because I'm sure you're familiar familiar with these rulers. These longer ones are really hard to keep straight when you're doing these long cuts and you need to travel your hand across it. So I want to push down on this with my hand flat because that's what I'm used to doing. Now let me make sure I have my measurement right before I, <laughs> before I cut. You really want to make sure just your thumb and the pad of your thumb or however you want to do it, you can just do your thumb. It's really not a lot of pressure needed on this ruler, but you really want to make sure that you're not putting your hand flat on it because when you cut, you're going to be there. Depending on the blade that you have, it could hit your hand. Now, mine doesn't have any blade at the top, so I'd be fine, but it does get in your way. All right, so now I have all of my cuts for the first set of cuts in this color. I do have a few more to make, so I'm gonna make those really quick just so I have, um, as I have this laid out and ready to go, and then I'll show you the smaller slide log. All right, so I made my first cuts for this pattern. Often in patterns when you're purchasing yardage, it'll tell you to cut your strips by width of fabric. So for this one, I cut six and a quarter inch strips by width of fabric. So I have these long strips of fabric here. So what I'm going to do is lay them out and then I'll be using my smaller ruler to sub cut them down. So I'm just gonna line them up on some lines on my mat. And then I'm gonna kind of work the same way that I did before. So I have my salvage end over here and I'm just going to line up on a line on my mat and square that up. So I'm just gonna trim off those edges. So I have that nice and straight. So I'm gonna grab my other ruler and I'm still going to be cutting these down into those six and a quarter inch measurement, but this time it's going to subcut this down into a square. So I'm lining up across that, that freshly cut squared up edge. I'm gonna push my ruler over, engage it. And then now I have trimmed those down into the proper size I need for the pattern. So I have my squares here. And you could always still just use the longer ruler if you would like to do this part. Um, the smaller one's obviously really nice because it's smaller, it's, you know, I mean, they're both easy to move around, they're not that heavy, but you know, sometimes you just like having that smaller, that smaller ruler to handle these smaller cuts. So a few other things to keep in mind with this ruler that are things that I've noticed that I really, really love about it is that because when you press this down and it grips the fabric so nicely, I can cut a lot more layers at one time with this ruler. So I've cut up to 10 layers of fabric with a knife sharp blade with the quilter slide lock and that really makes quick work of, of getting my fabric ready especially if I have all of the same cuts. And I showed that in the video that I posted recently of my Patriotic Bargello. So if you wanna see that, you can watch me cut some of that fabric 
And I honestly think this is one of the best piece quilts I have done so far because all of my cuts were so accurate. I didn't have any slipping of the ruler. I cut a lot of two and a half inch strips for that Bargello. And the nice thing is, is at the fold of that fabric at the end, I never got that weird wave in it. And that is because once you hold this ruler right in the center, it engages the whole the whole length of the ruler. It doesn't just hold in place where your hand is. So you don't have to travel your hand across the ruler. You don't have to remember to do any of that. I never have it slipping and I always have accurate cuts with the quilter slide lock. If you have any questions about it, put them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Hopefully I hit on everything to help you be able to use it and see if it'll work for you. Now I'm going to share a few clips of um, me and some of my family assembling the rulers just so you can get a look at that and how it's made. <laughs> 